Now first, just a quick little update regarding the whole alt is banned situation. I got a 30 day ban, I believe. I really did not look at the notice uh, that long. The reason for the ban was apparently I was using illegal software. Now you might be wondering, well, what kind of illegal software? Your guess is as good as mine, because you can literally see how uh, I used my alt alongside the revelation. All the inputs are manual, nothing automatic, nothing uh, that breaks any rules or anything like that, but apparently that is bad and I deserve to be mass reported and I deserve to be banned. But, you know, you can have a whole fleet running on macros and synchronizers and the same players will not give a shit about that, but one revelation with a daredevil tackle out, yeah, that's bad and that deserves to be mass reported and that deserves to be banned. So, that's basically uh, it about the the whole situation, I'm not going to be uh, doing any more updates on this because uh, that's going to be the conclusion. After the ban of the alt uh, has been lifted in about a month or so, I will transport all, uh, all stuff from the alt to my main account and I will delete my alt because uh, it will be mass reported and it will be banned again in the future. So. I don't see a point in uh, using that alt anymore, so that's going to be uh, it for this topic. And, well, time to go on the main thing, which will be the Mahler. So, I did show you a glimpse of this ship last time, and I nicknamed this ship the Bot Mahler. Now, back a couple months ago, there used to be a lot of Mahler bots flying around and uh, that kind of inspired me to go and buy this ship. I think it would be hilarious to to drop this thing on faction cruisers, on battle cruisers, on battleships and things like that. I will be trying to replicate the build that I showed you on the test server. O of course, it will be a little bit cheaper after all. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure this thing will blow up at one point. Now, the armor pressure bonus will give you plus 4% armor resistance, cruiser command bonus will give you plus 5% minimum laser damage and minus 10% minimum laser capacity need. You can run this ship as an alpha clone really well. One drone for high slots, two medium slots, five low slots, two combat and two engineering rigs. The Mahler is primarily a armor tank. Don't shield tank the Mahler, it's not going to be uh, good. The Mahler cannot be a shield tank, it's an armor tank. The capacitor on this ship is pretty good. The signature radius is okay. The scan resolution 256 meters, standard strength 13.2. The Mahler is definitely not the fastest cruiser, but it's definitely not the slowest as well. You can get some decent speed with the afterburner or micro warp drift with this thing. So, let's take a look at the build that I have on this. Now, 374.25 DPS with the um, classic C-type pulse lasers. 15.25 km is the op range, 49.48 is the tracking, 6.1 km is the, track, is the accuracy falloff. Overall, decent stats. I have one scrambler and one web, one drone. I don't have any uh, Mark 9 drones, but I'll be checking out that later. One afterburner, large capacity battery, dual medium armor repairs, and one adaptive armor hardener. Basically, this is the build that I roll on this ship most of the time, but I will show you some other builds that I'll be trying out. Now, of course, I don't have any uh, Mark oh, 9 drones, so I'll have to use the Mark 7 one. As for the rigs, I have one anti-explosive pump and one nanobot accelerator, which is a very nice combination. And for the engineering rigs, I have two ancillary power routers in order to be able to fit the um, large capacity battery. 
these are the armor stats, they look okay, I'm quite satisfied with that number and everything else also looks generally fine. So, let's unlock and let's take a look at the active stats of this accepted. little ship. Now I have the thermal circulation implant which gives me extra 20% armor resistance on all damage types. Which kind of works like one extra adaptive. So 32,000 hit points, 78, 71, 66 and 77% resistance. 854.58 meters per second is the afterburner speed. Overall, pretty solid stats. This is a very, very cheap ship after all. And for that price, I think it will be running really well. Now, I can, te I can technically improve the armor tank even more and I will show you some of the other module layouts that I will be using now I don't have a nano core on this thing although you can use one but since I want this to be as cheap as possible and the nano core can improve the price a little bit uh, I decided not to get one but Perhaps uh, in the future I might change my mind and I might go with a uh, with a nano core, probably a cheap one, blue or green, because all of them kind of work the same way. There is a little difference, honestly. So uh, that's one of the future plans that that I will have for this ship. Now the the nano cores can be bought on the market and one reason why I don't want to buy them at the moment is because they're actually more expensive than the ship itself. So the mother costs about 40 million while the green nano core costs 119 million and you have a bunch of them. Let's take a look at the blue one. Blue one is not available on the market at the moment but uh, it's also over 100 million. And there is probably more. Mahler Tungsten, 250 million, also a lot more expensive than the ship itself. Can be good for the interdictor, but for the tier 6 Mahler, I believe it's a little bit too expensive. But if you already have one of these nanocores, you can easily use it. But if you don't, well, uh, the nanocore is actually more expensive than the ship itself. Let's take a look at the ship price. It's, well, 52 million at the moment. I bought the ship for 35 million for some reason. Uh, everyone bought all of the Mallers from the market, not really sure what's happening with that, but uh, yeah, the Maller is now not really available on the market for some reason. The real price is about 35 million, and the Thorax, 39 million, also one of the ships that you will see me flying. So, uh, overall, it will be hilarious to roll with these things. So, I did say that I will show you a lot of... Uh, all the different options with the modules. Now, you can easily slap a large armor repair on this thing, but you will have to sacrifice the large capacitor battery because it will not have enough power. Yet. So let me quickly remove the two modules that are in the way, and as you can see, it has enough power to fit the large repairer. You can even fit a C-type repairer Undocking. if you like. It has enough power for it. Now let me quickly find one extra adaptive. Okay, this will improve the active armor resistance quite a bit. And let me find one medium capacitor battery that will help out with the capacitor. I, I kind of feel like this option is a bit more balanced than the large capacitor battery with dual armor repairs because with the large capacitor battery, in most cases, you will not use the full capacitor of the capacitor battery but the large armor repair does take full advantage of the sp of the medium capacitor battery and I believe that this might actually be a bit more balanced but let's take a look at the active stats of this ship let's scroll down to the fitting window and let's take a look at the stats 58,000 hit points 83, 77, 74 and 82, which is, you know, 
I would say a lot better than the previous stats that we had. Um, 1 minute and 46 seconds is the capacitor runtime. The overall capacitor volume is a little bit lower because it's a medium capacitor battery. 1025 repaired on 6.28 seconds. The ship has 6.6 thousand armor hit points, so you basically repair about one sixth of armor, which is a pretty good, uh, I would say, pretty good armor repair. Now, here you can take a look at Docking the medium accepted. capacitor battery stats, they're also pretty good. And now, let's see in how many cycles will the capacitor battery run out. Now the medium armor repairs do take a little bit more capacitor, but they repair the large capacitor, the large repairs do uh, take more capacitor, but they also repair a bit more armor. So what would be the better option? Two medium armor repairs or one large armor repair? I guess both are good. If you want to have more resistance, then go with this build with the large armor pair if you like uh, the capacitor to run a lot longer and if you like the large capacitor battery then you can run the dual medium armor pairs. I believe both builds are actually really solid. Now you can use a damage control which will give you passive plus 8.63% resistance or in this case uh, a bit a little bit lower because this is not the best damage control, it gives you 8.23% passive and it will last for 13 seconds if you activate it, so let's take a look at the active stats with this build can be good uh, as a panic button you can do two full cycles of the large armor repair which will recover about half armor about 40% in reality but about half armor and your ship will, will basically be immortal for 13 seconds. Excellent for critical moments. 35,000 hit points, 79, 73, 69, and 79 percent resistance. A little bit lower than the um, dual adaptives. Docking and the rest of the stats of the ship look the same. So let's wait for the capacitor battery to uh, come out of cooldown. Let's take a look at the. Um, Damage control active stats 94,000 hit points, 92, 90, 89, and 92% resistance for about 13 seconds, and you repair 1035 at 6.28 seconds. With the C type, it repairs a little bit more, so if you want to use the C type large armor repair, you can easily do so. The ship has enough power to fit that module. So, let me quickly go back and use the previous build. I actually really like the medium armor repair build. It's easy on the capacitor, it offers good tank. Now, when I take a look at the... Oh, and I can, I can actually fit a higher meta level capacitor battery. Well, that's interesting. I will c compare the stats of the medium armor repair and with the large armor repair just to give you a uh, view on how both of the modules work. Well, and here you can take a look at the capacitor battery volume. I did get a bit more capacitor now out of this capacitor battery. I was totally unaware that I can fit the, the faction one, but I can, so that's a good thing. I'll be using this capacitor battery. So, 483 armor repair at 3.92 seconds, Warp basically almost at 4 seconds. So you, you repair about 1,160 every 8 seconds, while you repair about 1,039 every 6.28 seconds with the large armor repair. But it does use a bit more capacitor, so which option is better? It's a very tough choice, honestly. Um, but let's go and let's yeet the mallet at the first target for today we have a drake now the drake is a battle cruiser can be tanky they can also have good dps usually drakes use the normal medium missiles so if the drake is using the normal medium missiles then it will be no problem to tank 
if the deck is using rapid missiles, it might be a bit a bit more difficult, but I think I'll manage. If the deck is using torpedoes, then uh, there might be a problem, but I think I should be able to tank without a problem. So, the first victim of the bot malware will be a drake. I have entered orbit, they have been scrambled and webbed. And let me approach, let me try to ram this thing. Looks like the drake is a tanky one. And I missed the ram, okay, fair enough. I forget that this thing is not the Cinnabal and that it's not as yeah, fast yeah, as the Cinnabal. Well, I believe that this Drake has a reactive shield hardener. And now the Drake is shooting at me based on the effects that the Drake... Based on the missile effects, I believe they are using torpedo launchers. The shield is gone, armor repairs are now up and running. I seem to be able to tank just fine, and the drake has been yeeted, nice. Okay, let's take a look at the wreck, yes they did use the torpedo launchers, okay. The drake got tackled by a bot mauler, that's kinda funny. Well then, I was the first victim for today, the tank did hold against that ship quite well. I believe against some ships I will have to switch Warp to the more tanky build with two adaptives or one adaptive and one damage control. I think it all depends on the target but for most targets this build should uh, hold really well. Let's take a look at kill. 283 million and yes this was a tanky one. They had a micro warp drive, one web, dual nosferatus, no stabs surprisingly. Well, let's go to the next target. We have a Vexor Navy. So this ship is a... I, I think the Vexor Navy is also a tier 6. Yeah, it is. So uh, both ships are on the, on the same level. The bot Mahler is, into, is in warp. Hopefully I will warp land close to the ship. After all, this thing is... It should be slower than the Vexor. The Vexor should be faster. 26 kilometers. I think that should do it. We're about to find out. I will try to approach. Looks like the Vexor is warping out. Okay, well. Time to uh, do some of the tricks that, that we usually do when the target escapes. I will leave system and I will come back and I will warp from the gate so that the Vexor lands close to me. Usually it works, it works like in 90% of cases so I have high hopes that the Vexor will come back and attack. when the Vexor comes back we will be uh, having some fun with that ship. We are under attack. Now the Vexor can have good DPS and can have good tank but usually the Vaxor is a speed tank boat and just as I guessed, the Vaxor came back, they warped at zero, they have been webbed and scrambled, I entered my orbit and now let's see what will happen. So both are same tier ships, both are good ships, the Vaxor is a armor tank, the Vaxor launched the beehive at my mother. Uh, they are infiltrators, so that means they are going to be doing EM damage. I have about 77% resistance on armor on EM, so I should be pretty good. Even if they do thermal, I should be good, but I think drones I think these drones have only one damage type which is EM and I can tank that without a problem. The Vexor's armor is taking heavy damage. They are trying to burn out, so I will approach. I will keep the ship at range. I will not orbit, because they can slip out of the orbit. 
approach, keep at range at 7 kilometers. The Vexor is into hole. My armor is holding really well. The Vexor's armor is gone now. They are in they are in hole for a long time now. And the Vexor has been destroyed. So let's loot the wreck. Okay, and let's warp out. That was pretty old school, I would say. Flying. You know, sometimes flying the ships is actually a lot more fun than flying the, the more expensive ones. I can tell you, I, I have a lot of fun with this thing. Uh, the bot mallet is surprisingly good. Now one hilarious fact, the actual bot mallets that, that you see flying around uh, have a better build than, uh, than some players. I saw some hilariously cursed builds on the mallet. 65 million is not bad, pretty solid. And for a red, not a bad build actually. That Vaxxer did look pretty okay. Okay, let's go to the next target. The next target is a Gila. Well, I'm in the I'm in the bot mallet and I will yeet this ship right at the Gila. Of course, uh, since I have only one scrambler and since the Gila most likely has a lot of stabs, my friend will have to do the tackle and I will warp after. That is to warp ensure right that active. the Gila doesn't warp away because nowadays most of the most of the worthy targets have a lot of stabs and unless you have like four for medium slots you don't have a lot of options to hold them you are you have to fly in a fleet or you have to have a dedicated tackle alt and since my alt is gone I can't really do that anymore so I have to rely on my friends to tackle let me quickly find the warp pin. Okay, let's warp. The Gila has been tackled. The the bot mallet is in warp. Now I believe the Gila is quite slow, but it's still a faction cruiser, so uh, it might be interesting to see how I will approach this thing. Okay, there is the Gila. They have been scrambled. My friend's phantasm is going to be chasing the guild. The phantasm is such a good ship. I might actually start flying one. I really do miss the phantasm. Such a good ship. Warp drive active. And I will probably start flying the vigilant as well because of ridiculously high DPS. Okay, now I start to do good damage on on the Gila, but I was still a little bit outside of the optimal range because, well, the Gila uh, did maintain good distance. I guess our speeds were quite similar, but the Gila got got heated and once I finish warp I will show you the kill. I'm not really worried if the ship explodes, it's cheap and I'll just laugh when it dies, so not a big deal if I lose this ship. 2.1 pill, actually a pretty solid kill, not gonna lie. A pretty solid value, two nest form drone damage amplifiers. This Gila was hasty, a very good kill. Okay, let's uh, approach the station active. for alignment and uh, we will wait for the next target to show up. So we have a prophecy. The prophecy is moving around and there is no good warping. So I'm warping to the sun and I will warp at 40 from, from my friends. Let's warp at 40, 39, 38. Let's hit at 37. We're under attack. 
Okay, there is the there is the the prophecy. We have to quickly approach because currently the prophecy is outside of our scramblers. I'm actually faster than the Stratius, which is hilarious because the Stratius is the slowest. Warp drive active. The slowest faction cruiser and overall I believe it's the slowest cruiser in the game. Okay, scrambled, webbed. And now the prophecy is in low hole and the prophecy is destroyed. Nice. This prophecy was moving, but uh, they're Warp moving at active. a wrong position. If they were moving at impossible to warp to locations, then they would be safe. But unfortunately, they did warp. They did orbit at the wrong position, and well, they got caught. 152 million, not bad. They had a scrambler, and overall, not a bad build, but. The profs did, did lack, uh, did lack tank. However, if they did maintain a long-range orbit or impossible to warp to orbit, then I believe that uh, they would be uh, they would be a lot more hard to catch. Okay, so the next target is also. Uh, a little bit difficult to catch. It is a Caracal Sniper. Now, Caracal Snipers are usually good ships. Uh, they have a lot of power grid and overall they are considered generally to be uh, very good. One of the few Caldery ships that are amazing armor tanks. Can be a sh shield tank but can also be a armor tank. Very difficult to break as an armor tank and one of the ships that players like to use as bait ships in low sec. I probably should fly one uh, at one point, but currently I'm interested in some other boats. Waiting for the warping command, my friend will do the tackle. Hopefully I land before the ship goes in flames. A Stratios tackle is definitely the best tackle in the game and there is no other cruiser that can do the Stratios tackle because no other cruiser can sneak up to the target and just attack them. However, I didn't fly the Stratios in a very long time. Warp drive active. Perhaps I should go back to the Stratius, I'm not really sure. Would definitely be a lot easier to do solo with the Stratius, after all, you sneak close to the target and you just unload the drones, unload the missiles or whatever weapon you're using and you yeet the target. Now this target is obviously uh, moving and with the Stratius tackle you really have to be close Warp but drive eventually uh, they got tackled and now I am in warp. Undocking. And well I believe I'm a little bit too late. The Caracal sniper got absolutely shredded by the Stratius. Warp drive active. That was quick. That was extremely quick. My friend said that the the Caracal did not have any cruiser defense skills, only 13,000 hit points. And well, this was a bling one, quite the expensive. Uh, quite the expensive Caracal sniper. They can surprisingly be very pricey ships and very good kills. Okay, let's go to the next target. Now, do you remember that? That Vexor from from the start of the video. Well, the Vexor is back, and uh, we are currently warping towards the target. And the bot Muller is rolling towards the the Vexor. 
the vex so did return for some reason. Oh, well, looks like one mother is already fighting with the Vexler, the Warp second drive active. bot mother is joining in on the fun. No, I think my friend is using a micro warp drive. Uh, I'm using an afterburner because uh, I plan to speed tank some ships. And the Vexor has been destroyed a second time. Well, I guess the bot mother is going to be victorious for a second time. Let's warp out and let's wait for the criminal timer to go down. Oh, of course, uh, I did start to dock with timer uh, because well, uh, I started to eat a lot more often. And since I can dock with timer, I might as well dock with timer until my internet says no and I get yeeted. But hopefully that's not going to happen. Let's take a look at the kill. 75 million, this time this ship was a little bit more expensive but roughly the same build as before with a little bit more drones in the cargo hold Next turret we have one Staber fleet that is also in the mission The bot Mallers are warping towards the Mimater cruiser Amar versus Mimatar. Well, that's interesting. There is the Staber, excellent warping. Let's quickly approach. The Staber is fast, so I have to web and scramble very quickly because the Staber will be a lot faster than the Maller. The, the bot Maller, to be more accurate. And I will orbit at. 10 kilometers. I feel like this is the optimal orbiting distance. However, I could orbit at 11 or 12 kilometers. Also works just fine. The Mimater cruiser is now active. into low armor. Now the Mimata cruiser is in low hole and the Staber has been destroyed. Okay, let's warp away. Well, I was, you know, it does uh, make me feel like in the good old days when I used to fly the RB back then. Most ships were like a Mahler, Vex, or Navy, and the game felt a lot more unique back then. So this is wh why I like to fly these, uh, these more cheaper ships, because they still have the same feel to them, and when you have a good opponent to them, uh, then the game does feel old school again, and I really like that feeling. Well, that's definitely a very interesting build, a small shield extender, okay then, and a no propulsion build on a Staber fleet, well that's, uh, that's let's say a little bit weird. So, uh, this was the first ever roam that I had done with the bot Mahler, of course, there will be a lot more, uh, I expect to have better targets next time, after all, I really want to drop this ship on a Dominix or, or a Raven or something like that because uh, I think that is going to be hilarious uh, when it happens but the targets today and in the last couple hours were like this no, no battleship unfortunately so I really hope that I'll have better targets for the next, for the next time but with that being said hope that you enjoyed uh, I love you all, stay safe, fly safe and I'll see you next time